Folks, if you thought the meltdown was bad before, brace yourselves, grab some popcorn, grab your favorite beverage, because it just got even more crazy when it comes to Old Donnie. And it starts with the context, which is that for the last day in particular, his entire legal team, as well as actual legal experts, are all telling him the exact same thing. He is in massive danger. You know, I've said this, you've said this, the Trump attorneys are not the brightest tools in the shed. They're not the sharpest tools in the shed. They're not the brightest light bulbs. So if even they understand, guys, that Donnie is screwed right now based on recent news, then you know it's absolutely factually true that he is in massive peril. So we're going to cover a little bit of that and then get in to maybe the most unhinged interview slash speech Trump has ever done. So bad, guys, that the reporters literally cut him off and walked away in the middle of his discourse because it was that crazy. He was that mad. He was that insane. He was collapsing into utter delusion. But first, let's start with why he's afraid. Let's talk about all of this now with our legal experts. We have Ellie Honig and Jennifer Rogers with us. Jennifer, does this special counsel announcement indicate anything about Trump's chances of being indicted? Well, Brianna, I think that it means that they're ramping this thing up. I mean, you wouldn't bother appointing a special counsel if they had determined that they weren't going to charge him and they were just going to wind it down over the next weeks and months. So it's certainly not 100 uh, percent certain that they will charge him, but they're pushing ahead. Uh, they're issuing subpoenas. And this definitely means that there is at least a good chance that ultimately there will be charges filed. Ellie, Trump's response to this was to say, I announce or, or, you know, I announce I'm running. And then they announced that they're going to do this with the special counsel. You heard the attorney general making it clear that, yes, that was the consideration. But in a way, it was to take it out of this political mix. What do you think of the timing here? Well, Brie, the whole point of doing this, of appointing a special counsel, is to avoid the appearance of a conflict of interest. And according to the attorney general, Donald Trump's official announcement that we heard earlier this week, that was the trigger. And he said, we essentially can't have a scenario where you have me, Merrick Garland, as Joe Biden's attorney general, investigating somebody who is likely or potentially going to be running against Joe Biden in 2024. Again, again, if the Trump lawyers understand this, if they get it, most of them are not the best. That's why he has them. He used to be able to get better lawyers, but because he's such a liability, he's such a pariah, he can't. So if even they get it, it's trouble. And what they know is that, and we've been saying this, I don't want to sound like a broken record. This is not a move that makes it less likely charges will happen. The guy they picked when they picked him, all of that is a sign that charges are very likely being considered and that they're moving quickly forward. And this sort of underlines it again, that this is not going to be a delay. This is a, a, an acceleration. So I've known Jack for decades. Uh, I was the chief of the criminal division when he started in the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, and with a group of really a tremendous class that he came in with, one of whom is actually serving as Lisa Monaco's uh, principal deputy, Marshall Miller. So I have a feeling that um, may have been a way in which uh, Jack's name came to their attention as a really good prospect um, for this job. And Jack, as you noted, has had all sorts of positions that make him really perfect for this job in the sense of his experience. He's a career prosecutor. He's completely apolitical in public integrity. They prosecuted Democrats and Republicans. They don't they don't care if you committed a crime. It doesn't matter what party uh, you're in or whether you're in no party. Um, so all of that is is a really good uh, sign. Um, the other thing to know about Jack is, um, you know, I worked for Robert Mueller and one of his phrases when he thought that you were wringing your hands too much was he would say, stop playing with your food. Um, meaning, you know, don't, it's important to be thorough and um, make sure you're anticipating things, but not to a fault. You can't just, you know, slow things down to use that as an excuse not to move forward. Jack does not suffer from that. For people who are worried, about this slowing down, I have the exact opposite reaction. And Lawrence, I completely agree with you, not just because of systemic 
uh, view, which is that he is going to be able to answer things and move things along a lot quicker than having to go through the huge bureaucracy of the department. Um, but his very nature is to move things along speedily. Um, that's that's how he was trained in the Eastern District, and that's sort of who he is, um, very much a can-do person. So I think that's all, you know, for the good. And in terms of um, our model prosecution memo, yes, of course, I'd love it if, if he read it. I'm pretty sure he's reading lots of binders of evidence um, that we'd all love to get our hands on. And if there's um, if there is an indictment, we will see a lot of that evidence. Again, I think that's really important because, and th and this is a mistake I think I made. I'm not a lawyer. Most of you aren't either. But, you know, a lot of us just assumed that a special counsel would automatically entail a delay. That, you know, the whole thing would be almost starting from, not from square one, but from square two or square three in a multi-square process where they would have to sort of ramp up and sort of make their own decisions and they might retrod the ground that Garland and the existing team has already done, but apparently that's not the case. This guy, because a lot of the work is already done and he's going to be building upon it rather than re, you know, retrotting that trail, and the fact that he's such a big dog expert makes it more likely that it's going to be faster. That with somebody that has no other case to deal with, no other issue to deal with, they're just looking at Trump and the J6 stuff and the Mar-a-Lago stuff, that is it. It's going to go faster. And this is bad for Trump because remember, he won. Yeah, he fears punishment, but he also fears the quickness of punishment. Remember that Donald Trump's goal has always been to delay and deny. And whenever he finds out something is going to go faster, that's really bad news for him. That's why moments ago, everyone tore in to his recent discourse. Here's just one example of the media ripping into him after they cut away from the BS. So they cut away from him, and this is where they went to. We're going to get into some of the words Trump said, because my God, it's insane. But watch this. I want to start with you. Your reaction, well, I, you know what? I don't, I don't want to talk about the former president, what he said anymore, because so much of it was, I think, misleading or, or just, you know, shiny objects there. Nonsense. Yeah. So Merrick Nonsense, Garland, John. Merrick Garland, uh, the appearance of a conflict. How necessary was it, do you think, for a special counsel? I think the attorney general had a lot of discretion here to make the decision for a special counsel. Um, he didn't have to do it. He wasn't required by law to do it. But it's in his good judgment to do so. And he gave the reasons for it, in particular, um, the timing with respect to the former president's announcement that he is now a candidate and the fact that the current president uh, has indicated all of his intentions to run to. So what the attorney general is concerned about is that the appearance of a conflict, the appearance of impartiality. And so I think his decision to move forward with the special counsel is absolutely defensible if it wasn't absolutely required. Like, I think that's wild, guys. Absolutely wild. That, you know, he, everyone knows he's crazy. He went up to this banquet, almost crashed this banquet, which is supposed to be about something entirely different. And you're up there in a tuxedo, just screaming and ranting and lying profusely. And here's just a couple examples where Donald Trump is not only insane, but he's actively calling for like unjust persecution of his political enemies. Really a sort of soft, violent act at the very least. Why aren't they investigating all of the other presidents that preceded me, including Bill Clinton, both Bushes, Obama, and of course Hillary Clinton, where she illegally deleted 33,000 emails after getting a top-level subpoena from the U.S. Congress. So she's allowed to get a subpoena and delete 33,000 after the subpoena, not before, after. Why aren't they going after all of those presidents that kept documents where in a couple of uh, they have to invade this is Mar-a-Lago they have to invade Hillary and Bill Clinton's beautiful home in Westchester they have to invade the Bushes home they have to invade a lot of homes but they didn't do that and they took documents they took a lot of things and that's what we have the presidential records act for like that's what he spent his time talking about that's what it was right that's the that's the the, the insanity he he continues to try and attack his political enemies people who have not been anywhere accused of the things he's done but simply because 
you know, he got, he did something illegal. Everyone else must have done it. And because everyone else must have done it, then, then he shouldn't be punished unless everyone else is punished for the things they didn't do. Right? Like it's, it's, it's asinine and it's insane. And here's the moment where the media cuts away from him in record time in a way I haven't really seen in a long, long time. And they won't be in for weeks. Third world countries have their elections in that same day or maybe the next day. We have weeks and weeks and weeks for far fewer. Look at France, all paper ballots, voter ID, same day voting. They had 36 million votes all done by 10.30 in the evening and no complaints. Nobody said, gee whiz, this was not a proper election. We're a third world country in our elections and our borders are wide open with unknown people, many of them, many, many millions, millions and millions Criminals, terrorists pouring into our country, millions. And don't believe when you hear two million or three million, I believe it's 10 million people. I believe it's 10 million. It, our country is changing before our very eyes. We have no idea who these people are and where they came from. And they're terrorists and they're criminals, and they're murderers, they're rapists. And they're pouring into our country totally unimpeded. We have massive inflation, rampant crime. You can't even walk down the streets in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and every other Democrat-run city without getting mugged, shot, or killed. In Chicago, recently, they had 82 people shot, 82 over a weekend. But they said it was a long weekend. Oh, okay, that's better. It was a long weekend. It was a long weekend. In Afghanistan, when I was in charge, we didn't have one killing, think of it, in 18 months, not one of our soldiers were killed. And then you look at Chicago and you look at other things. And we Former President Trump has out. moved on to Before other topics. League, we'll take this opportunity to move on with our program schedule. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland has appointed Jack Smith as special counsel to oversee so after he's collapsing into his madness, his insanity, they cut away there, right? He calls for violent invasions of his political enemies. He's screaming and ranting and lying, and he's rambling like an SOB, and the media cuts away from him. It's a real sign that he is broken because his lawyers told him, you know, this is going bad for you. Experts said, this is going bad for you and going bad quicker than we thought. And now he can't even contain it. It's great to see, in a sense, this man d dissolving into delusion, crashing into delusion. And it's only going to get worse from here. 